What's going on, man? We back again with another video. I wanted to talk about the Most Improved Player Award. Um, I feel like that's a topic that needs to be talked about. So, with this video, it's not going to be no face cam. It's just going to be me talking in the background behind some highlights because I have to get my point across. So, I had to look at these notes. So, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Um, we've grown pretty fast over the last couple months. You're just not subscribing. I'm getting a lot of views, y'all just gotta subscribe, so shout out to y'all, the ones that do subscribe, but just subscribe, man, we, we're doing pretty good, so hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like I said, I decided to bring up this topic, because while talking to a group of fans about who I think, or who they think can win the Most Improved Player Award, they brought up some names that I didn't like, and the reason why I didn't like them, because they were second and third year top guys that were also lottery picks, and I understand why they do that, because of what the NBA did last year with giving Ja Morant the Most Improved Player Award. Now, I'm not saying Ja didn't improve because he obviously did. I mean, going from 19 points to 27 points and his team going from a playing team to the top two team in the NBA, I understand why he was nominated for the award. That was obviously a major improvement. But when we look at Ja Morant, he is a number two overall pick. And he wasn't just any lottery pick. He's a guy with heavy potential, and we all knew that coming out of college. So for him to reach that potential, yeah, it might have been quick. Three years is really quick, but it was expected. And the NBA confuses me because why they took that angle, I don't know. Because if they want to use that, why can't I bring up that Trey or Luka should have won most improved player in their second year? Trey went from 19 and 8 assists to 29 points and 9 assists and led his team to a 4 seed in the competitive East in 2020. Luka Doncic went from 21 points to 29 points, 9 rebounds and 8 assists and led his team to a 7 seed. Those are major increases alike job. Also, why didn't they even have a vote to be in the most improved player race? I don't understand. Trey Young wasn't even nominated. He wasn't even top three. At least Luka got top three, and I understand that, and I actually applaud that because that actually helps your narrative. But why wasn't Trey Young there? Because he had the same exact gear that Luka had. Now you're probably wondering, okay, with that logic, why don't you care about Brandon Ingram or Julius Randle winning the award? Now with that, I think it's just totally different because when we look at those two guys, those two guys were brought to the Lakers to save that franchise, but it didn't work out the way they thought it was. Now, Julius gets traded to the Pelicans, and even in the Pelicans, he was very off and on, and people wrote him off, and then he get traded to the next, and their first year, it was even worse, and we were just completely off of him. But in that second year, he jumped from 19 points and nine rebounds to 25 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists, and let the Knicks I'll say it again. He led the Knicks to the fourth seed in the East while becoming an all-NBA talent. I shouldn't have to prove why that most improved player is valid. Same with Brandon Ingram. Like I said, he was brought into the Lakers to possibly save the Lakers because at that time we were a terrible franchise. But he ended up having three underwhelming seasons with the Lakers. But as soon as he gets traded, he leaps from 18 points five rebounds and three assists to 24 points, six rebounds and four assists and becoming a four, a first time all-star. He deserved that most improved player award. I miss times where the names like Pascal Siakam, CJ McCollum, Goran Dragic, guys that come out of nowhere and become all-star talents. Goran Dragic did it for a year. Pascal Siakam did it for a year. CJ McCollum out of nowhere, out of Lee Leahy did it for a year and became an all-star NBA talent. Pascal going from a random pink, balling in the G League, winning a championship in the G League, to the next year after that being a second option on an NBA championship-led team. The names I was hearing were guys like Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, even Ken Cunningham. Now, while I agree and I know they will improve Obviously, they shouldn't win the award because they are expected to do that. They are literally all top three picks. It's a given that they will approve. Even if it's early, it's still a given. 
we have to go back to the times where guys that actually made crazy improvements win the award. Like for me, I have Laurie Markin and winning the most improved play award. Yes, he's a lottery pick, but he's been on his third team. He hasn't found a home quite yet. Hasn't touched the potential that he was drafted for and that previous teams wanted. But now he's in a situation where he can be himself because there's no one in front of him, no one behind him to kind of challenge, challenge him or nothing. He has nothing to lose. Jalen Smith gets traded from the Suns, which was a dumb thing to do to do because they need a player like him now. In the games that he played with the Pacers last year, he averaged 16 points and nine rebounds. I can see him being better, and I can see those averages that he averaged with the Pacers being the same thing this year. I can see a guy like Kevin Herter coming into a new situation. The whole team looks better, and he's a big part of that whole team getting better. I can see him jumping up in stats, and I can see him winning that award because those are guys that actually improve, and we have to start awarding those guys that actually improve. So... Let me know how y'all feel about this video, man. I feel like this is a topic that has to be talked about. I think Draymond kind of um, highlighted it last year because, like, we all know Ja, he was supposed to do that, but he wasn't supposed Even Ja knew it. Ja gave the award to Desmond Bain because he knew not that he didn't deserve it, but it wasn't his award because we knew he was going to improve. Desmond Bain came out of nowhere, averaged eight points in his rookie season to averaging damn near 20 in his second year. That's... That's how you award somebody that's actually improved. So, let me know how y'all think this video was, man. I'll see y'all later. Peace out.